On the way to the Bay of Islands to commemorate the signing of the Treaty of Waitangi, New Zealand's cruiser Royalist with the frigates Carnieri, Rotuiti and the Australian training ship Swan carry out exercises. Through these waters, Captain Hobson sailed in 1840 in a small wooden sailing ship. He had no long-range guns, no radar, electronic predictors or emergency towing systems, but he brought the order and protection of the British flag. Under the Union Jack on the lawn of James Busby's official British residence, 52 Maori chiefs signed the Treaty of Waitangi. Two independent seafaring nations laid the foundations of a new dominion. A Navy motor launch starts festivities with a trip around the bay for the local children. If only their ancestors could see them now. they go at 15 knots. Royalist is dressed for the occasion, but another visitor is still in training trim, the Royal Navy submarine Andrew. On social occasions, the Navy, as always, thinks of everything. They've even organized a regatta for the ship's whalers, reminiscent of Maori canoe races. Those boats weigh well over a ton. Now to start events at Waitangi House, where nearly 7,000 visitors, Maori and Pākehā, have arrived to see the Governor-General lead the evening ceremony. Twenty years ago, at this place, the Treaty of Waitangi was signed. Captain Hobson, the first governor, Honi Heke, Terabraha, Tamati Wakanene, the peacemaker, whose words are echoed today by his descendants. In the words of the first governor, Heiwi Tahitato, we are one people. <laughs> 